Welcome to worship at Polk Street United Methodist Church. If you, this is your first time, I want to invite you to lift up your heart to the Lord with us as we worship in our historic sanctuary in downtown Amarillo. If you're a regular attender, if you would look at your phone and kind of click up on that, you can check us out at psumc.com and download our bulletin. And you can also sing along, pray with us, and worship the Lord with us as we worship together with you online and here in our historic sanctuary. This Thursday at 7 o'clock, we'll have our online Christmas Eve services. So I encourage you to get a candle, but also we have these communion elements already blessed for you. So if you would like to drop by the church office, if you're here in Amarillo, if you'd like to get some from your local congregation of United Methodist Church, you're welcome to do that. But we have a very special morning this morning with our Christmas cantata. So I pray God's blessings on you as we lift up our hearts to the Lord in worship. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad you're here as we approach Christmas Day and the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to check the back of your bulletin today. We're going to next Sunday, the 27th, from 11 to 2, we'll be having a blood drive with Coffee Memorial Blood Center over in our Great Hall. 
And I know some of you came last time and it got kind of balled up and, and some of you left because it wasn't going too fast, but they promised to send several technicians uh, to be able to do that. So if you uh, are willing to do that and a much, much needed service here in our area and city. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your very presence in this room as we worship you today. We thank you, God, for those who are giving of their gifts and talents today to lead us in worship and celebration of your life through music. Lord, we thank you that we might humble ourselves this morning by your spirit, that you might be the potter and we might be the clay, that you would change and transform us, make us new creations, to go out into the world this coming week and proclaim the good news. Help us, God, to glorify you with our lives, with our words, with our financial gifts, and all that we have, Lord, is yours. We pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. We have a very special uh, family, two, two families here. This is the Taylor and the Ham family. We are so glad that they are lighting our traditional advent wreath candle and um also you need to know that uh amy's daughter uh, olivia um she and her fiance coleman will be married in our church january 9th in three weeks three weeks they were supposed to be here but they are on the front line of ministry she is an er nurse and working this morning he's also a sheriff in the sheriff's department so we appreciate them and we are glad that you are here to light our advent wreath candle Isaiah eleven six through 7. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. Every year we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light. As we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. God of promise, come into our darkness. Renew your hope, your peace, your joy, your love in us. For you alone bring life out of death. Receive God's promise of love from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. Amen. Thank you all. So today, as we begin our Christmas cantata, you are invited to sing along if you know the songs. So now, let's worship the Lord with our Christmas cantata.
Adore him, Christ the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Shout for joy to the Lord, thanking him for the marvelous gift of his son. The words of Luke describe the news announced to the shepherds long ago. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. This is the reason why we celebrate. God is with us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men.
Before angels and shepherds. Before a star and wise men. The prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of the Savior. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come thou long-expected Jesus. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This morning, as we go to the Lord together in prayer, as we pause, I just want us to look around at these beautiful poinsettias. Absolutely beautiful. And if you look at this, these uh, beautiful Christmas tributes, many of these flowers represent someone, either in honor of or in memory of. So we're humbled by these beautiful living flowers. And it's an outward sign of an inward grace of that life found in Christ, both now and forevermore, whether they're living or they've gone on to live with the Lord forever. So thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your generosity. And we are humbled by these gifts in honor and in memory of someone. So let's pray. Lord, as we look at these flowers, as we think about these beautiful Christmas songs, the wonderful gift that you gave to us at Christmas, Lord, help us be humbled by the depth of your unconditional love for us that long ago you had us in mind. Lord, and you sent your one and only son as a baby to become like us so that we might know that way of the Lord, so we might know the way to you, O God. We thank you for those who have gone before us, those who have lived the faith with hope and joy and peace and love, who sang the songs, who gave the gifts, and were faithful. We weren't perfect, but were faithful. And we thank you for those today who carry that torch, who spread that light even in the middle of darkness. I pray that during this season, during this Advent time, as we are preparing our hearts, Lord, to once again say yes to you in big ways and little ways. And I pray that you will guide us by that light, touch our hearts, transform our lives. Lord, even be with us now. So Lord, thank you that your presence is with us, whether we're here as the congregation or wherever we are. Thank you that you're with us. We pray for those who are sick, those who are struggling, Lord, those who need your tender love and care. We pray that you would surround them with Christians that will bless them and encourage them, especially during this time. So now, Lord, together as your people, we pray that historic prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank everyone, this congregation, for their generosity in 2020. And as a staff member and my salary depending partly on your giving, uh, I'm very, very grateful. And I know as other staff members are as well. So thank you so much. If you choose to give, you can go online at psumc.com, and there's a very secure way to do that online. Let us join together in our operatory prayer. Giver of all good gifts, bless the offering we make this morning a small token to all the blessings you have poured down on us. Into our human weakness, you gave the greatest gift of all, Emmanuel, your presence with us in Jesus the Christ. Not just a presence, but an invitation through him to be your children and heirs to your kingdom. May our gifts, hymns, prayers, and promises Help us realize that kingdom in our hearts and in our world. 
In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. A young virgin named Mary was chosen of God to bear the promised Messiah. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Emmanuel, God, God with, with us. us.
The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The wolf will lie down with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf, the lion, and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. He shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In him was life, and that life was the light of all the people. He is the light. Arise, shine, for your light has come.
Amen. Wow. Um, Eileen, you did a wonderful job. Thank you to Eileen Moss for stepping in at the last minute. Thank you to our wonderful choir. They have put a lot of work into this. God honored all of your preparations. Thank you. It's like now Christmas can start. You know, let's hear it for him. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let, let's uh, praise the Lord for our orchestra and our brass and our, our instruments. And of course, Noel Paul always does a wonderful job. Very good. So now Christmas can start, right? But, um, but as we close here today, thank you for your support of Polk Street this year. I want to invite you, if you have never given a gift, but you have worshipped with us online, I want to invite you to send a gift in. Maybe drop it by the church. Something, somehow, it doesn't matter the amount. But God will honor your gift, and God will help us as Polk Street United Methodist Church finish strong and bless our community. So you're welcome to do that. And also, if you are traveling during the Christmas season, on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock, we will have our candlelight and communion service. So if you are in town, you're welcome to come. We will be socially distancing. We'll be wearing masks. And we will be hand sanitizing. Everyone will receive their individual communion elements and also a candle. And everyone will be safe as we possibly can make it. But if you feel uncomfortable in coming down at our physical plant, you're welcome to worship with us online. But also if you're traveling, I invite you to do that. We'll also be having an 11 o'clock service live, but not online this Christmas Eve uh, on December 24th. But as we close your day, boy, what a, what a wonderful gift we've been given. What a wonderful blessing it is to be here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. So I pray that you and your family will have a beautiful Christmas. And as I look out, I see so many of our, our families who are kind of back in town, some of our college students. It's good to see you all. And I hope that everyone stays safe, whatever you do, wherever you go. So now please stand as we receive this benediction. And now go forth with the promise of Christmas that love, joy, peace, and hope that God is with us both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. and welcome to Polk Street United Methodist Church. I'm Mike Jones, your business administrator. We remember and give thanks to God for our rich history and those who made amazing differences in our lives. The Finance Committee thought it appropriate to begin our 2021 stewardship campaign. This year, we would like to show you some trustee projects that have been happening during this unprecedented time of our lives. I am standing at the entrance of the oldest structure of our church. This 92-year-old building has stood the test of time, but often needs remodeling or updating to meet the present needs of our ministries. Zach Plummer, our Board of Trustees Chair, will give you some details about these projects. 
My name is Zach Plummer and I'm the chairman of the trustees here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. We're going to take you on a tour of a couple of the projects that we've been working on. Since a lot of you haven't been able to come to church in person due to the COVID restrictions, uh, we want to show you some of the stuff that we've accomplished and some of the stuff that we're still working on here at Polk Street. We're standing in the parlor. The parlor project came about mainly due to HVAC problems. We weren't getting a lot of heating and cooling in this room, so we decided to address that issue. Uh, however, when we did decide to do that, we noticed that we were gonna have to tear out a lot of the ceilings that were in the parlor. So we decided that, hey, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and address another issue with the parlor, and that was the lighting. That just grew from there. Uh, once we got all the furniture out, we noticed the spots on the floor, we noticed the spots on the wall. So it really did become a more encompassing renovation of the parlor. We replaced the paint on the wall, we replaced the carpet, and we added the TV on the wall so that it could be more user-friendly for any type of uh, gathering. All right, we are now above the sanctuary. We're up in the uh, loft up above where the mechanical units are. We as the trustees, we had some problems with the one of the mechanical units uh, had a bad coil, it was leaking. In order to replace that, we had to figure out a way to get that coil, which weighed somewhere around 300 to 400 pounds, out. As the trustees, we got with Leonard and we decided we were gonna need to build a new catwalk up here. We came up and we spent $25,000 uh, having them build a new catwalk which uh, allowed us to be able to get that coil out. It also will allow us to maintenance the uh, mechanical units in the future whenever we need to replace the air handlers. Uh, it'll allow us to get that equipment out and the new equipment in. Previously the there wasn't a walkway. We, we actually made it wider. We made it four foot wide. We put a handrail for safety. It is sturdy enough that we can roll a cart across in order to get the heavy equipment down. This is the equipment, the air handling unit that serves both the right and left side of the sanctuary. As part of a future capital campaign, we will have to be looking at replacing both of these air handling units. So this will help us in those future endeavors of replace, getting this equipment out and getting the new equipment in. We're now out in the columbarium, which is located between Wesley Hall and the CDC. We will currently have two columbarium pillars. Each of them have 36 eight by eight niches and 36 12 by 12 niches with double occupancy. Both of them will face inward towards the uh, new fountain. Uh, we are hoping that construction is complete here in the next couple weeks. This is one of the 12 by 12 niches. We have a special key that will take off the cover and you can place two urns inside. We also have the 8 by 8 sizes. It'll hold two urns as well and there's 36 8 by 8s and 36 12 by 12s. We'll also have a fence and a gate with that similar look with the masonry columns and the wrought iron fencing in between. The ground surface will be, will be pavers with uh, three different colors. The back side of the columbariums were finished with a stucco for now, however they allow for expansion of columbariums as the need arises. This year's theme is giving from the heart, a reminder that it is our collective privilege to give of our resources to our church throughout the year. The Board of Trustees are funded by the earnings of our permanent endowment. Each year, the trustees choose projects that match the funds available. The Sanctuary HVAC Project and the Parlor Project were funded this way. The Columbarium was funded by private gifts. The maintenance of the Columbarium site will be funded by the sales of niches. The entire campus of Polk Street United Methodist Church is maintained, cleaned, and repaired by funds in our operating budget. Thank you for your generous gifts throughout the year to help sustain the ministries of our church. God bless each of you as you give from the heart.